Hello and welcome to Cisco CUCM training. You will understand how to install, configure and maintain Cisco Unified Communications Manager, which is CUCM. So let's go in and investigate each chapter and we will understand what we will learn with the help of each chapter and throughout this course. Under chapter 1, we will talk about how to install CUCM and how to activate services. What are those services will be our main concern. We will first start with the VMware setup for our CUCM and how we can deploy the OVA file and then how we can do the necessary configurations and edit the settings for the OVA template for our virtual machine. Then we will start our CUCM installation. We will deal with its DHCP settings, IP settings, NTP, some username and password settings, and also some other settings that are crucial for our CUCM installations. We will go one by one how to install our CUCM for the virtual machine. And then the installation after the installation process we will activate CUCM services. Those CUCM services will help us to do the call manager functionality, to do some TFTP functionality for the distribution of configuration for IP phones, and we will also activate some services for the reporting purposes. So, on the next video, let's start with VMware setup. We will go over each topic that we will investigate on chapter 2, which will be all about CUCM navigation menus. First of all, we will understand how we can enter CUCM and how we can go, e go to each navigation menu and what are the three different passwords and two different usernames that we can use to enter different CUCM navigation menus. Then we will go over each different tab for CUCM administration, such as show, device system, what we will understand, what we will see from each menu item and we will not go into too much detail but we will understand the overall picture. We will understand what we should be careful about, which options we should be careful about and which options we will use frequently. Then we will go over and deal with Cisco Unified Serviceability. Cisco Unified Serviceability is where you activate Cisco Unified Services and where you can deal with different menus related with Unified, man, unified Call Manager services. And we will understand what are different, what are the two different types of Cisco Unified Services. We will go over feature services and we will understand network services separately. We will continue our discussion for the Cisco Unified Operating System menu. We will understand what we can do later with that menu, what are the different options for installing and how we can do it. Briefly, we will see. But for the detailed parts, we will go back to those menus and deal with them separately. Then we will deal with disaster recovery system. We will understand why we need it and how we can maintain and migrate our migrate back to our Cisco Unified Call Manager. And then you will go over different reporting options with Cisco Unified Reporting. And briefly, we will investigate different CUCM CLI commands and what we can do in the CLI and why we need it. So, in Chapter 3, we will talk about different Cisco Unified Call Manager user types and their privileges. What are those different privileges? What are those different user features? And we will talk about the passwords different user types, the application users and users, how we can associate certain devices for each user and how we can change some information related with those users. Then we will go on and talk about different user management options, how we can manage users, how we can add them manually, how we can synchronize LDAP with our user database so that we will get the users from Microsoft Active Directory and how we can let our users authenticate 
against an LDAP directory. And we will talk about the configuration part. We will see an example how to retrieve those users, how to use certain configuration parameters to get those users. And we will also write some custom filters to manipulate the users that we will retrieve from LDAP. So we will understand whether we want to get certain users that their department name starts with certain parameters or even we, we will be able to use filters for the names, for the departments, for managers, whatever we want. We will talk about this LDAP part in detail and we will go over and do some synchronization, authentication and write custom filters and apply them to see how it actually works in a working environment. So we will go beyond theory and do them in certain nice labs that will teach you certain parameters and how to do it live. Chapter 4 will be all about CUCM call flows and some call features. So first of all, we will understand CUCM meter streams. We will learn how SIP protocol is managed and controlled between IP phone, CUCM, and CUCM and gateway. Then we will understand RTP, which will be the real-time protocol that will be effective when the first initial signaling and controlling happens and when there is only the media control media transfer. Then we will learn CUCM calls future. How we can define some partitions, how we can define calling source spaces so that we will be able to define who can call who. And we will, with the help of partitions and CSSs, we will define some rules between calling privileges and we will let specific destination patterns for specific numbers. Then we will go over CUCM call routing. What are different call routing patterns? What are different components that can help us define the routing processes? Then we will move on to path selection. So route patterns, route lists, route groups will be discussed further. And we will understand CUCM hunt groups. What is a hunt pilot? What is a hunt list? And how we can define a line group? And how we can define the algorithm for the line group so that the phones, the phones in the line group will be selected according to the distribution algorithm. And in the last part, we'll talk about regions and how we can assign those regions to device pools and how we can assign devices to device pools. And what will happen if we define different regions and if we define different rules, different bandwidths between each region and why we need that. So in this chapter, we, it will be all about call flows and call futures for our CUCM. We will do labs for each configuration step and we will also see the see it on the graphical user interface of CUCM. In chapter 5, we will talk about IP phone registration processes and some features that are related with the initial IP phone registration. So first of all, we will understand how an IP phone is registered to a CUCM. So we will talk about six steps. And then we will understand what is the difference between SCCP IP phone registration and SIP IP phone registration. We will see the each difference and we will be able to answer in which one we will get the full configuration. Then we will go over IP phone configuration elements. What are those? And we will see it on CUCM GUI. What are the different configuration elements such as soft key template, button template, the MAC address, the line configuration and we will go over different methods for IP phone configuration. What are those different methods? Auto registration. 
adding the IP phones manually, using the bulk administration tool and using self-provisioning. And then we will go into detail of each different method one by one. So on chapter six, we will deal with CUCM telephone futures and some reporting. First of all, you will understand call pickup groups. Then we will go over how to define phone button templates and we will again continue our group pickup lab and we will see the result of it. Then we will learn call park and intercom futures. We will also configure speed dial BLF and we will enable mobility and schedule mobility on our CUCM. So this chapter will be all about telephone futures and then we will go over the CDR reports. As a last item, we will talk about RTMT tool. This video will be very long because RTMT needs to be investigated deep dive. So we will go over telephone futures and reporting and we will understand RTMT tool. Thank you for watching.